Okay, there are three more inverse trig functions we need to differentiate. The inverse cotangent, the inverse cosine, and the inverse cosecant. And if you followed the earlier three, then you might be able to do these three on your own. And I would recommend that. At this point, I would recommend just hitting pause and try on your own to differentiate the inverse cotangent function. The process will be very similar to the one we did with the inverse tangent. And try to differentiate the inverse cosine. And that process will look a lot like the one we did when we uh, differentiated inverse sine. And the derivative of inverse cosecant will be very similar to the derivative of the inverse secant. So try all three of those and then come back to this video and I'll show you the, um, the, the derivations that I've worked out. Okay, here we go inverse cotangent. Find the derivative of the inverse cotangent of x. So we write it like this. We say y equals the inverse cotangent of x and then we take the cotangent of each side. So we have cotangent of y equals x and then we differentiate implicitly. The derivative of cotangent is negative cosecant squared. So we have negative cosecant squared y times y primed by the chain rule equals 1. Then we solve this for y primed, and so y primed is negative 1 over cosecant squared y, and then we use a trig identity. Cosecant squared y is 1 plus cotangent squared y. and we plug that in there. So y primed here is negative 1 over 1 plus cotangent squared y and remember that cotangent y is equal to x so this right here is cotangent of y squared so that's just x squared. So this is negative 1 over 1 plus x squared. And that's it. And so you could write with the, the standard notation the derivative with respect to x of the inverse cotangent of x is negative 1 over 1 plus x squared. And there you have it. Okay, now we're told to find the derivative of the inverse cosine. And here we go we say y is the inverse cosine of x. We take the cosine of each side, so we have cosine y equals x, and then we differentiate implicitly. We take the derivative of each side with respect to x. The derivative of cosine is negative sine, so the derivative of the left sine is negative sine y times y primed. Don't forget the chain rule there because this y is really a function of x. And then the derivative of the right side here is just 1. Solve this for y primed, and we get y primed is negative 1 over sine y. And then the appropriate trig identity is easy here. Cosine squared y plus sine squared y equals 1. Let's solve that for sine y. Sine y equals the square root of 1 minus cosine squared y. And let's plug that in right there. So we get y primed is negative 1 over the square root of 1 minus cosine squared y. And this right down here, that's cosine of y squared, and remember cosine of y is equal to x. So that is just x squared. So we have y primed is negative 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared. So you can say the derivative with respect to x of the inverse cosine of x is, oh, that should be a negative sign right there, negative, negative 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared. And find the derivative with respect to x of the inverse cosecant of x. Okay, so y is 
the inverse cosecant of x and we want to find dy dx. So we take the cosecant of each side and we get cosecant y is equal to x and we differentiate implicitly. The derivative of the cosecant function is negative cosecant cotangent. So the left side becomes negative cosecant y times cotangent y times y primed by the chain rule and the right side the derivative of x is just 1. So we solve this for y primed and that's easy enough. y primed is going to be negative 1 over cosecant y times cotangent y. And then the identity that we need to use is this. Cotangent squared y is equal to cosecant squared y minus 1. So solve that for cotangent y and it's just the square root of this. So I'm going to plug that in right there. So y primed is negative 1 over cosecant y times the square root of cosecant squared y minus 1. Now remember that cosecant y right here is just x. So this is x and this cosecant y squared that's x squared. So let's just rewrite it that way. I'll leave that annotation there and just come on down. y primed is negative 1 over x times the square root of x squared minus 1. And once again we bring in the absolute value sign right here to make sure that in this case it's always negative. We have a negative sign right here but so the denominator will need to be positive. The, in other words the same little trick we pulled with the absolute absolute value sign right there when we were differentiating the secant function applies here. And so y primed the derivative is negative 1 over the absolute value of x times the square root of x squared minus 1. Okay, let's summarize all of these. Just write them down and learn these. These are worth committing to memory and if you're planning to take the AP exam you should plan on showing up with all of these committed to memory. So the derivative of the inverse sine function is 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared. And the derivative of inverse cosine is negative 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared. And then the derivative of the tangent function was 1 over 1 plus x squared. And then the inverse cosecant, the derivative was negative 1 over the absolute value of x times the square root of x squared minus 1 and the derivative of the inverse secant was 1 over the absolute value of x times the square root of x squared minus 1 and the derivative of the inverse cotangent was negative 1 over the square root of 1 plus x squared. And some little patterns make that make help, help you memorize these. Uh, this is the negative of that and this is the negative of that and this is the negative of that. You can uh, exploit those to help you remember them, but you should commit those to memory, especially if you're planning on taking the AP Calculus exam.